everybody, welcome back. If you're new, my name is Chris. Labor Day has come and gone, and even though the weather has started to get a little chilly in the mornings, here in the Midwest, it still is getting warmer in the afternoon. So I need fragrances that will help me transition from now until the solidly cold months of the autumn and the winter time. So I've picked, I think, 14 transition fragrances that do well in both the chilly and the warmer weather. So if you're interested to see what I picked, keep watching. So this first fragrance might strike a lot of people as an odd choice for a transitional fragrance. It's typically a summertime fragrance, and when you see this fragrance or you smell the fragrance, I think you're supposed to think of people running around the beach, particularly the beaches of Brazil. Um, getting a tan. However, there's something about these notes, and maybe it's just me, that also reads a little bit colder weather, and it is Sol Cheriosa 92. This one has a gorgeous pistachio note. There's pistachio, there's almond, there's caramel and sandalwood, and it's that caramel and sandalwood note that gives it, or notes, that gives it this, this warmth um, that just feels like sweater weather to me. So I th this is sweet. It's a sweet fragrance, but it's not overly sweet and cloying, at least to me. And I think because there's a note of salt in here. So it's just the right amount of sweetness, the right amount of warmth. And it just is beautiful. And I plan on wearing this particularly as the weather remains a little bit warm. So this is going to be my first transitional fragrance. This is a great year-round fragrance. So it's going to do well during this transitional time from summer to fall. If I had a signature scent, it definitely would be in the running for a signature scent. I adore it. And it is Valentino Donna. This has notes that are very bright. There is rose and bergamot in here. So it's fresh, but it's not too much of a freshy. And there's iris and leather that give it a little bit depth and warmth. So it is a warmer fragrance, but it's not too heavy. So the notes kind of play well with each other. And that's why I think it is a great choice for transitioning into the fall or autumn because it does well in the warmer weather, but it also holds up nicely when it's a little bit chillier. So this is my second okay. choice. I had to have a vanilla in this fragrance list. I'm a big vanilla lover. And this is a really good vanilla that I think holds up well if the weather's a little bit warmer, but absolutely if it's colder. I don't show this uh, fragrance a lot, and I don't know why, because I absolutely adore it. It's a fantastic vanilla. And it is by Essential Parfums, and it is called Divine Vini. This, I love this fragrance for so many reasons. I love this whole line. And this vanilla has a lot of depth and character, but it's not overly complicated. There are definitely some spices in the beginning. I think there's cinnamon and clove. And it has a slightly boozy... Um, scent to it. It's slightly boozy, slightly incense -y. and when it dries down, I definitely get this ambery, tobacco -y, a sweet ambery tobacco vibe. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I wore it last summer. It did really well, and I wore it into the fall last year, and another reason, or one of the many reasons I love this, but this is um, this big giant bottle is only $75 and it's a niche house. So I just think it's a great vanilla for the price. Um, next one up is a fragrance I've talked about before. And once the colder weather starts to kick in, this fragrance is going into my vault. It's going to be put in the box and it's going to be put away until the warmer months because I think this does well in mildly cold weather and hot weather. And it is by Fragrance Dubois, and it is Santel Complet. So this is definitely, um, if you've never smelled this or never heard of it, it is a sandalwood, as the name implies. It is a sandalwood-centered fragrance, but it has some notes that make it, in my opinion, do well, or allow it to do well when it's a little bit warmer. There is definitely, to me, I get this kind of sweet, toasted coconut note. Now, there is a note of lemon in here. To be honest, it is barely detectable to me. But the beauty of this fragrance is it settles into this beautiful, 
sandalwood, amber, slightly coconut fragrance with some sweet spices. And even though I don't detect cinnamon per se, I just detect this nice, sweet spiciness to it. If you are sensitive to cinnamon, you may not like this. And I only know this because I have a subscriber friend who is very sensitive to cinnamon and detects cinnamon in this. So um, sweet kind of spices. I love this fragrance, but um, it will go away when it gets really cold because it's light and it does not do well in the colder months. And even though the longevity isn't great, I have found a couple of body creams that I can layer with this and improve the performance. And um, that is in my layering video and I will link it up here if you haven't seen that. And part two of my layering video is coming soon. So anyways, yes, Santal Complet will be in my rotation for my transitional fragrance. So I have at least two Gourmand roses in this collection or this list. The first one is by a house that I discovered last year and just completely fell in love with and bought several full bottles from the line. And this is called Jardin de Misfa by Unui Nomad. This is the only date-centered fragrance that I have and the date in here is has the perfect amount of sweetness. So the, the notes that I smell in here, for the most part, are date, rose, and almond. And the rose in this is a, is a rose water type of a rose. That's the rose that I smell here. There are other notes in here. There's um, saffron, there's nutmeg, something else. Oh, cardamom. There's some sort of spice. I believe it's cardamom. It's just so yummy. The problem with this, the teeny problem with this is that it's not a super strong fragrance. It does not do well. It doesn't perform well when it's really cold. So this transition time is actually perfect for this fragrance. The next transitional fragrance that I will be wearing for the next, you know, six or eight weeks or six weeks or so is a fragrance by Memo Paris. This is my first Memo Paris fragrance and I had my eye on this for a long long time because of the note of sesame and I was just waiting for the prices to drop just a little bit and I got a decent deal on this so I snatched up this um, this bottle this is a great fragrance it's kind of a yin and yang this is a very fresh it starts off very fresh it's like a tea based fragrance it's lightly citrusy there's grapefruit in here a little bit of florals. I think it's orange blossom or, or neroli. Something else, maybe some rose. It's mildly floral. It's mildly citrusy, but it is very fresh. And there is a note of, I think, mate tea as well. And it's not bitter. It just gives it a nice warmth and earthiness so that it cuts through the, the colder mornings, but it does nicely when it's warm with those fresh notes and it dries down. You can get that sesame note in the dry down with a nice little clean musk. So it's very light, very inoffensive. That's why I had it in my office friendly fragrances. It's not overpowering. And I think that just not going to do well as when it's really, really cold, but it'll do perfectly fine in warmer weather and mildly chilly weather. So yeah. I am so excited about wearing this next fragrance. This to me is just fall, delicious fall in a bottle. And it is La Danza de Lily Bayou. See, I practiced that. Um, so there you go. That is La Danza de Lily Bayou. Which translates into the dance of the dragonflies. So this just screams colder weather, but still a little bit of sunshine. If you've never smelled this before and you're a gourmand lover, oh my goodness. This is one that I would say try to get a sample of, especially if you love apple. This is an apple-based fragrance. This has a, you know, the apple is the star here. This is a really crisp red apple. This is red apple. This is vanilla. This is, I think there's a whipped cream note in here and some sort of wood, probably sandalwood. To me, it kind of smells like an apple pie. You know, apple pie with a little bit of whipped cream. Absolutely gorgeous. And I cannot wait to start wearing this one. I didn't wear it all in the summertime. 
The next one is an Aldi but a goodie, and it is Angel. This is my EDT. And this one I did not wear in the summertime, but I just, for me, I like to wear it during those transitions. I like to wear it um, going into the, the fall or the autumn, and I like wearing it coming into the spring. I just think that it smells the best. And I've said it before in other videos that this is my preferred version of Angel. I have a couple other flankers, but I absolutely love this one because the kind of the heavier notes that can be a little bit off-putting, those have been pulled out. And there's some fresher notes in here. I think there's also a note of green apple in here. So it's a nice, fresh take on um, Angel. And I enjoy wearing it during this time of the year. Next up is my second Gourmand Rose of the group and it was my fragrance of the day because today was a perfect day to wear this fragrance. It started off nice and chilly but then it warmed up. There wasn't a cloud in the sky and it got up to be I think about 88 degrees and it is by the House of Tower, Tower Parfums or Tower Fragrances and it is Fian Rose to Kandahar. The reason why I enjoy this fragrance so much, other than the fact that it smells so good, is that it is very unique. And there are many, many fragrances that I enjoy, but the ones that I treasure the most are the ones that are, are unique and that don't smell like anything else. And this does not smell like anything else because it's a very interesting take on rose. So what makes it a gourmand is that it has apricot, there is almond in here. Um, of course there's rose. The rose in here is a special kind of rose. It is, the rose oil is extracted from, I believe it's Afghanistan in the Kandahar Valley. And it is a very, very high quality rose and it's hard to get. So it has um, a lot of value. There is some um, cinnamon in here. The cinnamon is present but not overwhelming and gives it just a little bit of sweetness. And then for me, it dries down into a gorgeous amber. It is a beautiful amber fragrance. I think there's a little bit of blonde tobacco, but what I really get in this, it's just, it is a gorgeous gourmand rose with a beautiful amber background. I think Andy Tower does a fabulous job with his ambers, and this is no exception. The next one is a very unique fragrance in my collection, and it was not love at first sniff. In fact, when I first smelled this, I thought, oh. Well, the name of the fragrance is called Ooh La La by Theo Cabanel, and I have two or three fragrances by Theo Cabanel. Um, when I first sniffed this, uh, it wasn't Ooh La La, it was Ooh No No. The, the very first, the opening was a little bit shocking to me. And it wasn't until I wore it the second time and I waited for the dry down. I think I actually washed my hands fairly quickly after testing this. I sprayed it on the back of my hand and then, you know, it didn't take me long to wash it off. Then I wore it a second time. I was testing a bunch of different fragrances and, you know, like three hours later, I sniffed the back of my hand and I thought, oh my gosh, what is that? And I backtracked and figured out it was ooh la la. Now, the opening the first time, I didn't, it was just a little bit strange, but I have come to really, really enjoy it. It's, it's like an acquired taste. It's like beer. You know, when you first taste it, it probably tastes terrible. And then it just takes time to enjoy and develop a fondness for it. And that was this one. And now I think this is really, really unique. So what makes it unique is that it has this very prominent kind of a dry nuttiness. So there is a hazelnut note. I have other fragrances that have hazelnut. They tend, they're a little bit creamier, a little bit smoother, a little bit softer. This is a very dry hazelnut. And then it goes fairly quickly into, there, there's orris. There's an orris root in this. And this is the type of orris. So iris and orris can smell different ways. You can get powdery. It can be sweet. In here, it smells almost vegetal because orris is a root so it can smell like other root vegetables i think it kind of smells uh, when you when you wear this for a small portion 
of the of the wear it does kind of remind me of like a carrot it has this this earthy mildly sweet vegetal quality maybe a little bit of leathery quality to it and almost a bready quality so it's this it's nutty, then it gets a little bit, um, then it gets into the orris root, which is a little vegetal, a little, um, a little bit powdery, but as it dries down, it dries down into this really lovely sandalwood that sweetens up. There's either vanilla or tonka, and it gets this lovely, lovely, it has this lovely, lovely dry down that I adore. And I wore this, um, I wore Fia and Rosa Kandahar this morning, and this afternoon I wore this fragrance and at like five hours it was going strong at two sprays. So yeah, two really fun, interesting fragrances that I think will do well in this uh, transitional weather. The next one up is Olympia Intense by Paco Rabanne. I tested both of them, the original and the intense. I prefer this one because this is, you know, this is vanilla, salt, and amber. And what that translates to me is caramel. So this one is like a good, I would wear this like on a date night uh, fragrance in the summer, but this is also super nice and warm and cozy as we go into the, the colder months. Oh, there is just something, something about this fragrance I adore. This fragrance I actually will spray on myself, even if it's just me at home, everybody else is gone, and it's just like movie night. Oh, I'll douse myself in this, get under the covers, and just, mmm, smells so, so good. So the next one is a fragrance that is definitely more suited, in my opinion, to the colder weather, but not super cold because it is a fairly light fragrance. So I like to wear this in this transitional time. So the fall and the autumn, and I loved wearing this in the spring. This was one of the fragrances I wore most in March. And so I tend to wear the same fragrances in March that I do right now because the weather is a little bit similar. And this one is um, another fragrance Dubois and this is New York Fifth Avenue. This is another rose fragrance, but it has some deeper, richer, warmer notes that definitely read cold weather. This is rose and bergamot to begin with. There's absolutely no mistaking this fresh, slightly green citrusy rose that pops right at the beginning but it dries down into a more woody fragrance so there is oud in here i do believe there's sandalwood and there is a note of caramel and also um violet that's it violet gives it a nice powderiness so those notes together make this a perfect fragrance for the colder weather but not super cold because like i said it's an understated fragrance it does not project it's not beast mode and to be honest with you that's exactly how i like this one i like it just the way it is so yeah two more good transitional so fragrances. we're down to the final two fragrances and this next one is a fragrance that is fairly new. I picked it up this summer and it is by M. McAuliffe. And this is Royal Rose Oud. And I wanted to get this fragrance because a lot of, or I have a ton of fragrances that are really deep, spicy rose oud combinations, but I wanted those notes in a fragrance that was lighter and brighter. And that's what I found here. So. This has, you know, a little bit deeper note, so it's got the rose, obviously. It's got some fruity notes. I believe there's black currant. There's a little bit of musk, some saffron, and it has oud, but the oud is not a deep, overwhelming, heavy, dark oud. This fragrance is just very bright and kind of sparkly and a little bit effervescent, and I think a lot of that comes from maybe the black currant that's in here. So a beautiful light, slightly um, feminine fragrance. It has some rich notes that will, so it'll hold its own when it's colder, but it's not gonna be overwhelming. There are still some bright notes in here that will allow it to do well 
you know, on the days like today where it's a little bit warmer. And then the last one I'm going to end with is a fragrance that I just picked up in the past. I think I picked it up beginning of August and it's already, now this is the third video it's made. I'm a big fan and it is by Henry Rose, the clean fragrance house and it's called Queens and Monsters. I did all of the tester coffrets from Henry Rose and this one was the one I knew I wanted to get immediately. There might be other full bottles to come. I imagine so, but this one is gorgeous. And this one is very unique. There's a definite DNA that runs through these, particularly in the opening of some of the warmer fragrances. So they kind of have a warmer set and they have a fresher set. The warmer set kind of opens up very similarly. This one opens up a little bit green and it's a, it's a violet leaf. I wasn't sure what it was at first, but I looked it up and it's a violet leaf and that makes sense. So there's, there's this nice greenness from the violet leaf, but it's not overly green and sharp. It's very smooth. There are a little bit of florals. It goes into a little bit of a florally fragrance for just a touch. And then the magic in this happens in the dry down. This dry down is beautiful. It is a sweet, vanillic sandalwood. And I think what adds to the dry down beauty in this, it has a note of cocoa musk that adds a sweetness and a warmth to it. It's gorgeous. Love it. And I just ordered the body cream um, by suggestion of one of my subscribers. Jolie, thank you for that. So I'm going to be smelling really, really good with those two. And this one just got, I think this got an Allure Beauty Award for 2020. It's, it's a really good fragrance. So that does it for my, my transitional fragrances from summer to fall. Um, thank you for watching. I would love for you to, in the comment section, let me know what your transitional fragrances are. Thank you for stopping by. If you're still with me, I really appreciate it. Thank you for supporting me to all those who subscribe to me, and I will see you on the next one.